a really great pleasure working on uh, this program. Um, I had a lot to work from, um, all pretty much from local submissions. Um, and I just wanted to start off this brief Q&A by asking the artists to talk about the impetus of their work and their process. Anyone can jump in and I'll start because I have a mic in my hand. Uh, my name is Christine Lucy Latimer. Thank you to everybody for coming. Uh, my very, very short project is called Nation Time, and the impetus behind the work is uh, to take a glimmer of a moment shot on a really shitty cell phone camera of uh, fireworks on Canada Day and use um, several analog loops um, with RCA cables running through different kinds of uh, analog tape decks, Betamax and VHS, to try and extend the duration of that moment um, with feedback and see how different um, technologies and their delay systems, um, especially analog technologies, can bring out not only the digital pixely squares in a really shitty cell phone video image, but also extend the duration of that moment of explosion. That's pretty much it. Hi, I'm uh, it's John Neller, my film is Axis. Um, my process is, in this case, was entirely photomechanical, and um, so optical printing, shooting with a film camera, just a fairly laborious process where the original photography is recopied onto other sort of black and white copies and then through optical printing those layers are combined and uh, with mats. I'm a, I'm a lover of my city. I, I love Toronto. I've lived here for 25 years and the city for me is, is like um, uh, an inspiration and I guess one thing in this particular film it was uh, you know, focusing on the glass and steel of the, uh, of the new age of Toronto with the, uh, the condominiums and uh, I guess my suggestion that I'm making in the film is that uh, um, even in sort of a, a fairly corporatized sort of facade, you can still sort of find um, sort of beauty, and sort of make beauty, you just have to kind of seek it out, really. I guess I'll go. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Johnson. It was really nice to see that program and really great works and great to be here. Um, my film was called Push, Pull, Recover, and it came out of a, a workshop in Cuba with Phil Hoffman and a few other uh, York students. And um, basically we went to this film school, which is uh, about an hour outside of Havana, and we were shooting every day, um, working with students, shooting on 16. And at the end of the day, I would go for a swim in this amazing pool, and I started recording sound there. Um, and about midway through the trip, I realized I wanted to shoot something and trying to capture the experience of swimming. And, um, and so we shot this kind of frame by frame thing, and the next day I went back and the pool was empty and people were sweeping it out, so I recorded the sound, and what came out was about 30 seconds, um, so it was uh, extending those single frames and uh, digitally manipulating them and then hand painting them. And the title, Push, Pull, Recover, is actually instructions for how to do forward crawl and seem to kind of fit with the, um, the kind of struggle inherent in swimming. So, yeah. Yeah, my name is Heather, and I did The Surface of Perfection. My process is quite similar to yours in uh, re-photographing, optical printing. I guess uh, my teeth are a little more out of you, I was wondering um, <laughs> uh, where these other appropriate images or footage came from. Uh, uh, they were uh, uh, like this, illegally shot off of uh, DVDs <laughs> <laughs> on a 16 millimeter um, and then re-photographed. I was, I was interested in um, the sort of shifts within a melodrama of things that were considered happening. Hi everybody, I'm Byron. Uh, very exciting. Thanks for coming, guys. Um, I'm the filmmaker of 1997. It's all found footage. Uh, I contacted the footage were found from a filmmaker named Michael Roke and he was very kind of him to share that image for me and I did decompositing afterwards. And uh, the film is really about the transition of the figure and how the landscape changes visually and a pawn on that would be the social and uh, 
social changes in the landscape in the city, in Hong Kong. Um, I'm Chris Kennedy, I made Brimstone Line. Uh, there were a couple of inspirations. I've made a few grid films and a friend of mine sent me a, uh, a picture of uh, three grids in a row that were uh, used to measure the current outside of Santa Cruz in an oceanographer, uh, oceanographic research center. And then the other uh, inspiration was uh, a, a five photo series by Hannah Schwalton called Looking Towards Tomorrow. He's a walker and he, um, uh, he, his art is walking and then these photos were each taken at the end of the day looking towards the next day. And so I was thinking about that when making this, planning this film and, and making this film. And in many ways, you know, when we're looking up, <coughs> maybe we're looking at time coming at us. And also a zoom is also a type of current as well. And then, of course, the current is also temporary, poor health sustainment as well. So those are a couple of things that were kind of playing through my mind while I was making this piece. Hi, I'm Nathan. Um, thanks for coming. I'm happy to be here. Um, the impetus, I did the space rift video, uh, the one of the best. Um, the impetus for, for that was um, I was spending a lot of time on the Greyhound between Guelph and Toronto, and I was really bored. And uh, I wanted to make my bus ride a little bit more interesting, and um, so I just used my little iPod to uh, shoot through a, a drop on the window uh, to kind of recreate the world that I was um, uh, seeing. So um, I don't. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, hi. Um, <laughs> this is John Creason. I'm Adam Rosen, and we made um, Surfline. Although I think uh, I think we both want to be John Miller if we grow up. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, we wanted to thank Images. We wanted to thank uh, Johnson for programming this. We wanted to thank. Her Becca Gruen for being very patient with us. We wanted to thank our sound designer, Ted Phillips, who's back there. Uh, I'm not sure what to say about this. Um, it, it's sort of another extension or version of a lot of things we've been doing lately, which involve using performance, live performance on video, single take, single shots, and basically using uh, the camera as a process of transformation, which I think is what we're really interested in at this point, and particularly we're using uh, what are essentially uh, <coughs> art, you know, artificial or artifice that's induced by lenses and cameras and by mechanical process, which still happens uh, even on digital apps. I mean, a lot of that is on digital as well, so I think that's over. Interesting to explain. The other thing I want to say before I forget is, if you want to see the evil twin of this film. We'll be showing it at uh, the open screen on Tuesday night. We encourage everybody to come. I'm uh, Nicholas Pai. I made a film or a video called Stumbling Block. And I don't know about you, but I have to pee after a program all about water. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, thank you, Johnson. <laughs> um, this video was supposed to be a lot larger. I tried to. Um, make a more sort of feature length project with no dialogue. Um, and that didn't work out. So it went through about four or five different edits and it ended up that I just took these sort of dream sequence moments and intercut them uh, with the help of my pal, Jeffrey Pugin back there. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> um, so it, it ended up more as, a, I think, a video poem than anything. Um, quite happy with it. It was a sort of a transition piece for me. Um, I'd been making making work with a partner for quite a while and then sort of sort of bridging out and making work on my own. So this was kind of the first video I'd made on my own out of this collaboration. Uh, so it was dealing with similar themes, but uh, it was refreshing to do on my own. So thank you for coming. Okay. Is there anybody else down there? Yes, Judy. Um, I'm Deirdre Loke. I made the last piece, the piece called Pond. Um, it is in a, a part of a lifelong uh, journey working with the idea of the self as subject. Uh, Pond is part of a, a literal body of work that is very much in the flesh. 
the um, the piece itself was made at uh, in Mount Forest at the Independent Imaging Retreat, uh, Phil Hoffman's film farm, in an overpopulated pond. Um, thanks to I think it was Stephen Andrews who threw in some koi the year before. Um, but it's kind of it's kind of you know I think very, my process is very much situational. I try to find circumstances or uh, event horizons where I can insert this idea of the self or the body as material and try to figure out where the self begins or ends, where the kind of the body finds its thresholds. And so it's really the piece is very much about the tension that builds in the few minutes that pass where I sort of have courage at the beginning and kind of lose it at the end. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's also a kind of a bit of a wake-up piece for some of you who um, you may have thought it was going to end well. Um, so I think it was a good piece for last, and hopefully that will stimulate people to have some questions. So thanks for including me. I guess I'll take this opportunity to open the floor up. Hey, ben. So my question is for you, Johnson. I'm just curious. Is this a uh, subject that you were looking for? Is it just something that emerged uh, from the pool of uh, submissions? Um, okay, that's a good question. I actually had no um, curatorial theme going into the invitation and I watched um, hours of footage, um, two different submissions and then going to CFMDC and VTAPE, thanks for your community support, um, to create a program and I had actually had two programs simultaneously um, running in my mind trying to find the connections and I thought that this program was stronger in which um, each film or video linked itself to the next one either through its formal qualities, the dissolving silhouettes, um, the, the play with the horizon line, um, playing with geometric shapes, um, the grid, the circling, um, the anti-form within the fireworks and then leading back to the figure and performativity around um, the changing state of water within stumbling block and then transforming towards the swimming of push, pull, recover and, and then ending with a kind of a, a light-hearted ending to a, a long um, journey of water and meditation. So thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead. One question for John. I was wondering, when you're editing your video and composing the soundtrack, was the video edit done first and it's at the top, or was it sort of like an organic process of sort of yeah, composing both at the same time? It was pretty separate, I would say. I mean, there was a lot of communication. Basically, I locked picture, and then um, you know, a video transfer of the film was made and given to the, the audio team, and they're, I think most of them are here, Stephen Barden. Christy McIntyre, Connor Ailsley, and Nick Grimshaw did the music. Um, I gave them detailed notes though, and uh, we would have meetings kind of back and forth, and they would show me sort of, um, you know, they would show me their first pass of things, and then we would, I have to admit, sorry to the sound guys, I kind of let you down there on one occasion where I missed a meeting, so my apologies for that. Uh, I'm sure Barden's still pretty mad at me about that one, but uh, in any case, it was, um, it was just a, a wonderful team to work with, and I, I kind of fixed focused on the images, but I had lots of sort of oral sort of things going on in my, in my head in terms of what I was thinking, but I really wanted to pass it along to people who were, you know, really skilled in their area, basically, with, with audio, and uh, the first time I did a 35mm film, so I wanted to try to go about it, um, it, you know, I wanted to, I knew the sound had to be really, really seriously taken care of, so a lot of communication, but it was pretty much a separate kind of process. I think I saw Brian, go ahead. Now, dear I've never been bit by a koi myself. <laughs> I'm really curious, I think maybe some of the people are. How much did that hurt? <laughs> or did it hurt? Well, I think it's, it's a, you know, it's sort of when you see someone covered in tattoos and you're like, did that hurt? 
I mean, yeah, I, I certainly, it's not like I'm totally averse to using digital technology. Uh, in this particular case, though, there was various reasons why I had to stick to kind of analog editing. Um, I guess because I had to prepare the elements that would be used for the optical printing. And uh, um, so, yeah, it was an entirely sort of organic sort of film-based process. And there were times when I, it sort of, I mean, most of the time I, I liked the process a lot. There's a few times when working in 35, you sort of, you know, to get, there were times when I kind of almost wished for digital in a way because it's sort of you could really overlay those sort of spin shots so that they would line up exactly, you know, and I had to kind of just, in, in some cases, I had to kind of go by, I had to wing it a little bit. Um, um, but I still, you know, I still really, and as long as I can work with film, I will. Um, I'm sort of on a self-imposed sort of moratorium right now just based on finances, but, you know, eventually I'll get back to it, hopefully. Uh, if that answers your question. <laughs> Well, thanks everyone for joining us and on our journey through uh, the collection of drops. Um, thanks again to Images and AGO Jackman Hall. Please join us at CineCycle for a party of drinks and dance uh, with music by DJ Mama Nose. And uh, thanks again.